So good afternoon to all of you. So I'm Joanna Marcruz and I'm a graduate of the University of the Philippines, Las Banas. And I am now currently taking my MD-PhD in Molecular Medicine at the University of the Philippines, Manila. So I know it's a different field from what I'm talking about, but I think we all have the um, same approach on how to create technologies in the Philippines. And I think that is what I applied and that's, that is what I learned from this research. So for this afternoon, I would be talking about um, our research on plant growth promoting bacteria which we isolated from post gold mine soils in Antawak Benguet, Philippines. So I did this um, research at the Metroplast Laboratory at Biotech, um, also here in UPLB. So first, I would like you to look at this photo. So what can you infer from these photos? So as you can see here, it is very highlighted that in mining areas, there's really no to few vegetation. And it's really create an impact on us. So why, does, why, do we keep on, um, why do we keep on doing mining activities if we will end up having this kind of environment where there's really poor vegetation? So now we go back to understanding why mine. So mining is basically an activity which greatly affects the stripping of soil and the digging of, pit, and digging of pits. And this activity causes this several phenomena. First is soil degradation and erosion, loss of biodiversity and vegetation, and lastly, accumulation of heavy metals. And you may not think, uh, living here in the Philippines or here in the Asian region where mining practices is really um, abundant, you can see that there's really soil degradation, loss of biodiversity and vegetation. So now, after having this um, mine activities and now going into reclaiming the soil, are we really on that um, level that we have reclaimed the soil after we mine or after once we um, finish mining and then decided that we want to replant again? have that environment with good vegetation, um, have we reached that uh, part here in the Philippines or um, in the countries near us? So first, we have to understand, if we really want to reclaim the soil, we have to understand why is there a loss of biodiversity and vegetation. And one of the um, link is that if there's a loss of biodiversity and vegetation, one one, one thing that happens is that there could be changes in microbial population and diversity. And we all know that microbes, specifically your plant growth promoting bacteria, which occupy the rice sphere, is the one factor which is important to promote the plant growth and confer defenses in the in um and confer plant defenses. And how can they, how can they um, do this, this PGPDs, is that they can release your phytohormones promote endofixation and of course your pea solubilization. And if these PGPDs are present in your environment, we can see that there could be an improvement in your vegetation. However, there's still an existing gap. Even though we know that there's a problem in vegetation and um, um, inability to reclaim soil in those mining areas, there's still few studies looking into soil reclamation methods. And that is why our research tried to have these objectives. First is to isolate your end to fixing and desolubilizing bacteria from the mine soil. The second one is to determine the presence of indole acetic acid and gibberellic acid activities and the presence of nitrogenous, nitrogenase gene. And lastly, to determine the molecular identity of the bacterial isolate. So this objective tries to answer the question, how can we start? How can we start developing a technology in which it could aim to reclaim the soil in those nine sites? So this would just be um, this was just the flow of our research. We followed um, soil sample collection and then we isolated N2 and N2 fixing and desolubilizing bacteria. We performed IAA and GA assay to confirm their um, release of phytohormone, and then we identified if if H or nitrogenous gene is present among those and finally to identify their identity. So this is where we collected our samples. So from Benguet, Antamokitawan Benguet, we isolated samples from these three different sites. First, Antamok Dump, Antamok Pete, and Mine Tailings. So these three samples have different characteristics. 
Such that your anta mock duck, we collected it from a top of hill created from stockpiled mine soil. So the second one is the pit. Um, it is where um, the edge of the, the open pit. So this anta mock duck is created while those uh, miners try to open the pits around the area. And then the last one is the processed mine soil. So among these samples, um, we now get um, several microbes. So we used several media selectively um, looking into M2 fixing and P-solubilizing bacteria. And then afterwards, we tried to determine if they're really M2 fixing and P-solubilizing by using your Tuberitis medium and NBRIP. And after that, we were able to isolate 68 bacteria. And you may now ask, why is, why is there only a few number of microbes present? Because um, as mentioned, we only use a medium which is selective for N2 fixing and P-solubilizing. So that's one that limits our um, collections. And then the second one is we only use culture-dependent methods. We weren't able, um, we didn't opt to use uh, metagenomics or any culture-independent methods because we were really looking into uh, culturing those microbes and afterwards developing a technology which really could help the area in the baguette. So now, after having this 68 bacterial isolates, we now moved on to um, determining their phytohormone activity. So first, we, um, we did IA assay, and the second one, we did GA assay. So what I'm going to be showing is just a representation of our data. So as you can see here, most of our isolates really exhibited good IAA production in the presence of tryptophan. And then, um, the second one is the GA. Also, you can see here that all, almost all of them have that increasing GA activity. So from that, we can, um, from our data, we were able to isolate 16 uh, microbes which have a good IA activity, GA activity, N2 fixing, and P-solubilizing activity. So afterwards, now that, there, now that we have um, N2 fixing bacteria, the, um, the next question was, are they really expressing or do they really have that nitrogenous, nitrogenase gene? So we did NIF-H amplification. So again, this is also another limitation of our study because we only um, look into NIF-H. We know that there are several genes for nitrogenase, NIF-A, NIF-G, and we only use NIF-H um, because there's a presumption that your NIF-H is a universal nitrogenase gene. However, in our study, we were only able to get nine bacterial isolates having that nitrogenase gene. And, and out of the 68, we can say that nine were able to um, perform IAA production, GE production, and to fixation, pseudolibilization, and the presence of your nitrogenase gene. And afterwards, having, that, uh, having um, an idea that those isolates have good characteristics, we now want to know what are their taxonomic ID. And we performed it using your 16S RNA and bioinformatic analysis. And we were able to get this genera, your Pseudomonas, Enterobacter, Klebsiella, Bacillus, Brevibacillus, and Cytrobacter. So for our blast data, this is just the summary. So you can see here that most of our isolates are coming from the genera, from the genera Enterobacter, Cytrobacter, Klebsiella, and Bacillus, Brevibacillus, and Pseudomonas thyroidensis. So, again, this also posed another good thing to do about our research is that what if now we confirm their pathogenicity, their safety? That's, again, another um, thing to be ventured on. So, just to summarize, um, among the isolates, we were able to get 68, 16 of which have a good IAA activity, J activity, and to fixation and solubilization. However, only nine of them were able to um, were found to have your nitrogenase gene NIF H. And then having all this vast of information, knowing their identity, knowing that they were able to perform your IAA and GA production. So what's next? First is to again, which is the main goal of our study, is really to have an idea on how we can create biofertilizers fit for mine soil. And that is why we really isolated bacteria from the mine soil because we know that this, that's really um, an environment where you can think of those um, 
type of environment is where your bacteria can't survive. However, in our study, we were able to find several good microorganisms which, again, we can utilize to create microinoculants or biofertilizers which can promote plant growth in the mine soil and determine whether a consortium or a use of only one bacterium can really promote um, plant growth in that area. So, that ends my presentation. So, again, um, I did this research under the Microplus Laboratory and I would like to thank the University of the Philippines as Banos as well as Biotech and the Get Corporation. So if you have any questions, you may email me or my advisor, Dr. Jocelyn Zarate. Thank you.